Hello and welcome. My name is Gino Barbara, one of the co-founders of Jake and Gino. And in this how-to, we are going to be talking about the Corporate Transparency Act, the CTA. And if you haven't heard about it, well, you need to listen to the show. And if you had heard about it, you still need to listen to the show. Why do you need to listen? What are the reasons why? Do you want to pay some really huge penalties? Do you want to become a felon if you don't follow the law? I'm joined today by Harry Barth from Barth Calderon and Paul Hitchcock. We're going to be going over the Corporate Transparency Act. More importantly, how and why they instituted the act and how you need to start filling out your entities. There are over 33 million entities in this country that are affected. Are you one of them? So without further ado, Harry, welcome to the show, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being here. I'm, uh, hopefully today I'll take you on a bit of a tour of the uh, the ins and the outs of the Corporate Transparency Act. One of the most critical acts that were passed by the government that nobody knows a whole hell of a lot about and the government's quite serious about. So definitionally, you're going to hear me say uh, a few things today. You're going to hear me use the term FinCEN. And the term FinCEN is an abbreviation for the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. And they're a division of the United States Department of Treasury. And they are the division that's responsible for implementing and carrying out the Corporate Transparency Act. The Corporate Transparency Act was passed in uh, 2021, uh, but not implemented in full and in earnest until January of uh, 2024. And it's quite significant. What is it? Well, basically, it's the building, you know, of a database of very, very personal information on everybody who owns an entity other, other than that's exempted in the United States of America. This database is information which is being used and is only to be used by law enforcement, government utilization, and literally also some foreign governments that are involved. It was passed basically as a result of 9-11. The government's been trying to see who are the human beings behind the entities. Who are the human beings behind the limited liability companies, the limited partnerships, and the smaller corporations? And it applies to every single entity in the United States of America, not just those formed after January 1st, 2024, but every entity that was formed 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Makes no difference. If they're not exempt, they must file under the act. So... We'll learn about the information that we have to do. We'll learn about the logistics of complying with the act. And But some things come about that people need to do. People are going to hear that uh, that they heard that a court uh, declared this act unconstitutional. There was a court, and it was the case was the uh, National Small Business Association versus Yellen that was heard in the Northern District of Alabama in federal district court. And the judge, in a summary judgment, ruled uh, in favor of the National Small Business Association saying that Congress did not have the power to pass this act. But it's very important to understand that the only people that are now delayed from filing are the people who are members of the National Small Business Association. Everybody else in America must comply. There are at least 33 million small businesses that need to comply with this act. And the need to comply with this act, you'll learn very shortly by December 31st, 2024. And Harry, the government's appealed that case already. And the government has appealed that case. And based upon my close to 50 years of experience, I would think that maybe some portions of the Corporate Transparency Act might be declared unconstitutional. But inherently, we don't think that the appeals court is uh, going to go along with this judge. Uh, they should be overruled, and we don't think any other uh, Circuit Court of Appeals, other courts, or the Supreme Court will overturn the Corporate Transparency Act. Um, it's too important. It's been adopted by Western economies already uh, and advanced Eastern economies as well. So again, uh, who does it apply to? It applies to every single limited liability company, limited partnership, and corporation, unless they're exempted, that's in existence in the United States of America. Specifically, it does not apply to trusts. So if we have to go to the Secretary of State's office and get an entity born, when that entity is born, or it was born through a Secretary of State's office, it must comply with the act. Is the government serious about this? Well, 
here's the fire. Here's the fine, you know. The fine is now, if you're not in compliance by the deadlines, and there are several different deadlines, it's a $591 a day fine for each violation of the CTA with no cap. In addition, mm. if we willfully do not comply, it's a $10,000 criminal fine and up to two years in prison. It's a felony. So it is a felony not to comply with the Corporate Transparency Act. So knowing that, let's talk about compliance. For every entity that's in existence prior to January 1st, 2024, we have until under current law, December 31st, 2024, to bring that entity into compliance with FinCEN. For new entities formed after January 4th, 2024, from the date that it was born, we have 90 days to have it in compliance with FinCEN. If we're not within the 90, $591 a day starts the fight. So it's, it's, it's quite uh, significant. Knowing that, uh, we'll talk about how we comply, what's needed to comply, uh, the detriments associated with it, some small benefits associated with it. Um, I think everyone will have a great handle on what's involved. So first, let's talk about who is not involved, who does not have to comply. Gino, this is targeted not to big business. This is targeted to Jill and Mabel's hair salon, the two people in a Florida S corporation. It's there that the cartel in the back room has done its work for terrorist financing, money laundering, and tax evasion, which is the goal of this. And remember, as we go through this, the goal is who are the human beings behind and controlling the entities? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at the exemptions that we have, because they're very important to know who does not need to comply. So who does not need to comply is, first of all, is a public company, a company that's listed on the New York Stock Exchange, a company that's listed on the American Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, SEC, FINRA. They know everything about all the people that are involved. They got their fingerprints. They got their background. They know where they live. They know who they are. They do not. That, those companies do not need to comply. SEC registered investment advisory firms do not need to comply for the same reason. The mm -hmm. SEC has their background, their fingerprints, their credit reports. They know everything about these people. They know who the human beings are. Same thing with venture capital fund investors. They know who they are. Then you have insurance companies and insurance producers. They do not need to comply again because they're licensed by the state. Their background is checked. So every insurance agent getting a license and every insurance company authorized to business the state doesn't need to comply. Certain uh, highly regulated financial services businesses do not need to comply, such as banks, credit unions, registered security brokers and dealers, for all the same reasons, do not need to comply. Public accounting firms that are registered under Sarbanes-Oxley to provide public accounting for large companies do not need to comply. Tax-exempt entities like nonprofits, mm -hmm. uh, political organizations, and again, trusts. Trusts are funny, though, because if a trust owns an entity that needs to comply, then the trust needs to comply. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. And then, of course, subsidiaries of an exempt entity, a direct subsidiary, doesn't need to comply, but a brother-sister does need to comply. And probably the one that affects many of the people of our constituency or the people that we're talking to today is what they call the big company exemption. Now, the big company exemption, you know, is an and, not an or. There's three things that we have to have. We have to have 20 full-time employees as determined by state law. Not independent contractors, not part-timers. If it's considered a full-time employee by state law, we have to have 20 of them. And we have to have our office in the United States. And we have to have $5 million or more of gross sales. So if you've got $5 million worth of gross sales with 20 full-time employees in your office in the United States, you do not need to comply. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put together uh, a company. Uh, we're going to put together an LLC. Uh, what the heck, we'll do it in Florida. Uh, so we'll do create a Florida LLC. We'll call it Gino Harry Co. Um, LLC. 
And uh, we're going to, of course, manufacture uh, widgets. All right. And we're going to have two DBAs. Widgets are us and widgets are them. And we're going to form that LLC. Um, I'd say it was formed around March 27th of uh, 2024. So this is a new company. We'll talk about the pre-existing companies as well. And this company can own property too, Harry, right? Absolutely. Owns real estate, owns four unit, owns uh, houses, whatever it may be. Here's the deal with it. It doesn't have 20 or more full-time employees. It doesn't have $5 million of gross sales, uh, but it but may have its office in the United States. So it is an entity that must comply with the Corporate Transparency Act. So let's say what happens. So what happens is, is first we have to have our company registered within 90 days, you know. So mm -hmm. we have to go to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, or your attorney does, um, and file the company. So how do we file the company? What is the information that is required? And the company, Gino, becomes the responsible reporting party for all of the other components that you're going to learn about in just a few minutes. So it's the company that is the responsible party. So what we have to do is we got to go to FinCEN and give them the name of our company. It's Gino Harry Co. LLC. No problem. We must give them all of our DBAs. Widgets are us. Widgets are them. We must give them the physical address of our company, not the lawyer's office where it was formed, not the accountant's office, not a UPS suite, not a post office box, the physical address of the company. If we don't have a physical address, it's our home address. Must go to FinCEN. And it must include a unique identifying number, which is usually the EIN number that we got from the IRS. So we give them the EIN number. And if it's a single member LLC, that does not have an EIN number, then we have to give them our social security number. Oh. It just gets better. So now we file that entity that is now the reporting entity under the Corporate Transparency Act. Now we must also file with FinCEN something which is known as the beneficial owners of interest. Any individual or entity that owns 25% or more of our company must file. So in our particular company, Harry owns 50%. Gino owns 50%. So we must file as beneficial owners. So what does that mean? So we have to say, okay, we got to put Gino Barbaro, your name. We must put your home address, where you live. And we must also upload to the Treasury Department a color copy in the form of a PDF of your driver's license in the state of Florida or your passport in an unexpired version. Must. Okay. So Harry has to report that and Gino has to report that. And it's the responsibility of Gino Harry Co. in order to make sure that the beneficial owners do report. What happens if Gino and Harry hate each other and don't want to work together? Have you come up across that yet? Absolutely. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. So uh, let's just finish this compliance and then I'll, we'll, we'll take you through that. So that has to be done. Um, and so one of the things that everyone could do is make life a little bit easier. And I would suggest this for you as well, Gino, is and we can't do this as a law firm for you. You go, you go to the FinCEN's website. Uh, Paul put that up in the chat. Uh, it's www.fincen.gov uh, and open up an account. And you open up an account at FinCEN under the Corporate Transparency Act and you give them your name, you know, your home address, your driver's license, give them everything you need and then upload that to them. The reason we can't do it is I want, you know, where'd you go to high, where'd you go to high school? Where'd you go to elementary school? What was the color of your first dog? There's two factor authentication associated with it. And remember this again, remember repeat for everybody, because we get these questions all the time. This is not a public database. This is a, there's a database for law enforcement use. They will give you a number, Gino. So it'll be Gino Barbaro number, blah, 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 blah. So in all the cases where you need to report, as a beneficial owner, you could just put your name and number rather than putting your home address and, and your, your identifying documents every single time. So so it's a little it's a little weird though, because 
it's not only who owns the company. So you can't, if you're a minor, you don't have to report, but the parents of the minor need to report. So anyone owning over 25% interest. But what's unfair, not unfair, unclear, is people don't recognize it's not only ownership, but it's also control. Mm -hmm. So if we have someone that we have hired, uh, a manager to run mm -hmm. Gino Harrico LLC, and let's say it's an S corporation that's owned by Paul Hitchcock, his corporation. So even though he's not an owner, or maybe he's a 1% owner, he has a controlling interest in our company. Mm -hmm. So he must report. Anyone that has substantial control over an entity must report. So Hitchcock Co. is an S corporation. It's, it's a pretty big company that we hired to manage our widget company. So every C-suite decision maker, the CEO, the COO, the CFO, the president, all must report. Because as managers of our entity, and it's our entity that has to get them to report. And if they have a board of directors, Gino, that can remove and replace the president, the CEO, or the COO, every member of the board of directors must report as well. Remember, who are the human beings? that can move money around, change control, change ownership. That's who they want. Now, that is really interesting. So that's an awful lot of reporting. So for a corporation, it can get really, really big. And for our LLC, all of a sudden, we're at like 20 or 30 reporting entities for our LLC. So let me give you an example of how this works. We were doing a, a workshop the other day for a bunch of CEOs in Texas. Of course, everybody in Texas is in oil and gas business. So they had a lot of a lot of CEOs that were in the oil and gas business. And let me give you an example of their structure. So when they drill an oil well in Texas, that's a risky business. They can blow up, they can catch on fire, people get injured, there are pollu pollution issues. There's lots of lots of risk associated with it. So usually almost 99% of the time. That oil well and that rig is an LLC. So you have oil rig LLC. Does it have 20 employees? No. Does it have over 5 million gross sales to start? No. It is a reporting entity. And who invests in that oil well is usually five or six other entities, LLCs. No one's investing individually. It's Gino's LLC and Harry's LLC and Paul's LLC. So there are five LLCs who are the owners of our oil well LLC. And every one of those five LLCs need to report their ownership and control. Many of those LLCs are held by holding companies, held by larger oil companies. That holding company that holds the LLC that made an investment in our oil well needs to report. And if we've done a good job as your estate planner, all right, then we don't want all of our investments running through a probate court or a surrogate court. Usually we will hold our interests or our investments or our assets inside a living revocable trust, which we've talked about so much, you know, or in LLCs or other trusts, asset protection trusts or generation skipping trusts, all done for appropriate estate planning and asset protection purposes. So if Gino, your 50% ownership in Gino and Harry Co. is held in Barbara Family Trust, the trust, which is not a reporting entity unto itself, is holding 50% of a reporting company. So we now have to report who created the trust because the settler has powers. We must report who the trustees are of the trust. We must report who the trust protectors are of the trust. We must report who the beneficiaries are of the trust and all of their identifying information. In addition to that, if you have the power, like a, a the power of appointment or a trust protector to move assets, because there are many specialized functions within a trust, every one of them must report. So in our simple company, which started as Gino Harrico, LLC, the company reported, the owners reported, the trust reported, and many times, many of our, many of the people of our constituencies, they have 
multiple LLCs, or we've told them for asset protection purposes, get too many properties and intellectual property, too much money in one LLC, put it into other LLCs. Those are all brother sisters and need to report. Now, talking about the reporting for new entities that are formed after January 1st, 2024, in addition to all of the reporting people that we just talked about that need to be reported to FinCEN, we also have something which is known as the company applicant. What the heck is that? So, you know, you came to me and you said, Harry, uh, I, I want you to form this uh, LLC for my partner and myself with Gino and Jake. And we said, great. So my uh, paralegal, Cheyenne Petty, filed with the Secretary of State in Florida and Tallahassee to form that LLC. She must report as the filer of the company her information. And if I'm the supervising attorney that recommended the LLC, I must report as well. So Harry Barth, the supervising attorney, Cheyenne Petty, the paralegal, all need to report. The company is reporting. Its owners are reporting. Anyone in control of the company is reporting and our trusts are reporting if we've set it up properly for estate planning. So we may have 20 or 30 reporting entities or reporting individuals or owners of interest in our very simple entity. Now, we don't usually have the problem for new entities, you know, of Harry and Gino hating each other. You don't have, you know, when you start a new entity, you kind of know who the people are. You kind of know where it's going to go. You're going to know who's going to be in control. You're going to know if it's going to be in a trust. You, you'll know all that within 90 days and can file it with, uh, with FinCEN. It doesn't present as much of a problem. If anybody says, and then, but when we now produce a new operating agreement, shareholders agreement, limited partnership agreement, there'll be new language that we all sign that we need to put in there, which we do, called Corporate Transparency Act. And it says, if you're going to be a member of Gino and Harry LLC now or in the future, you must comply with the Corporate Transparency Act. It is the company's responsibility that you do so. If you do not, you cannot be a member of Harry and Gino uh, LLC. In addition, you have agreed to report any changes. So if Gino, you know, if you move out of Florida and you move them to Georgia, you have a new residential address and a new driver's license, under current law, you only have 30 days to file that updated information with FinCEN. And the responsible party to making sure that Harry and Gino and our trusts and everything keep everything up to speed is a company. So what's really happened is that small businesses are really getting forced into working with law firms that are experienced in this area for several reasons. Reason number one, the AICPA said, hey, we're not going to, all of our CPAs shouldn't touch this with a 24-foot pole. Do they consider it to be the unauthorized practice of law? Because in looking at an estate plan that owns these interests, we need to determine who has power, who were the settlers, who were the beneficiaries. This is a legal determination. And substantial control is also a legal determination. So you have to kind of map out the reporting that has to be done. And then once mm -hmm. it's all mapped out, then it actually has to be filed with FinCEN. You could sit there and deal with that Byzantine website for four hours and hopefully get it right, or you can have a professional take care of it for you. So you have all of those things that come to play on a new entity. And like I said, just to repeat the timelines, 90 days from the date it was born, we need to, but new entities, we kind of know the people. We know who's behind it. But now we have 33 million entities, every entity you own, Gino. Let me give you an example for myself. I own Barth Calderon. Barth Calderon as LLP. The law firm has over 20 employees. Our headquarters are in the United States. We do over 5 million of gross sales. So that is correct. I don't, Barth Calderon doesn't have to report, but Harry Barth has 12 other entities that are listening to you, hold my real estate, hold my investments, hold my intellectual property, may hold other businesses that I'm involved with. 
every one of those does not have over 20 employees and 5 million of sales. Every one of those need to be registered under FinCEN. So people get confused. Sometimes they look at the one entity and say, well, uh, subsidiaries, a subsidiary, if my if a subsidiary of Barth Calderon would not have to report, but a brother sister entity or one on by me does need to report. Looking backwards, you hit it right. So here we are. Everybody that has, I just literally got off a, a web a web call with one of my clients. Uh, typically, my clients have between fifteen and twenty entities, and Every one of those 15 needs to be reported under the Corporate Transparency Act. Some of them are 20, 25 years old. Some of them, which we didn't form, we don't, we don't, we, at least on the older entities, older than January 1st, 2024, Gino, I don't need to put down who the attorney was that formed it. And I don't need to put down who the paralegal was. Don't worry about it. I never knew who the hell they are anyway. So now we have to take a look at, you, you look at the documents, you look at their limited partnership agreements, their shareholders agreements, their LL, none of them are up to date, right? So, you know, things may have been sold, people have died, people passed away, things have moved into a trust, moved into different beneficiaries, people have sold interest, people have gifted interest, people have gotten divorced. They're not talking to each other. They don't even know where the other people live. And they still may own a percentage of a company or a controlling interest in a company that needs to be reported. There are, you know, no exceptions. You must track them down. They must report. So if my ex-wife turns around and says, I am not giving you that information of where I live, not giving you that, you know, she owns 25% of the company, but she's not giving me, I haven't talked to her in 15 years, all right, other than sending her out, you know, uh, electronically, okay, one at the end of the year. If she willfully will not give that information on behalf of the company, she could be subject to she to five hundred ninety one dollars a day fine until she complies, and they could put her in jail. Ugh, this becomes quite problematic. As you can imagine, the pushback that's going to take place. In addition, the company there are no exceptions. The company now has, let's say, nineteen reporting individuals, eighteen of which report, and the nineteenth which refuses. Make our company cannot be filed until we have a resolution on the 19th. Buy them out, throw them out, turn them in, have people come, you know, arrest them, whatever they need to do, because we need to know, or the government needs to know under this act, who are all the human beings, because that 19th might be the terrorist that's looking to finance something through the utilization of our company as a front. 18 of us are clear, and the 19th is not. So there's an opportunity to get rid of nefarious, act, nefarious actors. A couple things um, that I think are important to know. Do you know, this is just one, to, one and done. It's not an annual reporting requirement. Once we have Gino Harry LLC filed, absent changes in ownership or changes in our FinCEN information, which we have 30 days to report under current law, uh, they're trying to push that to 90 days. Um, we no longer need to report. We're, we are in the database. We're done. I repeat, we may have used a state that had, doesn't disclose who our members and managers are. This is not a public filing. So no one's going no one should be able to reach that filing. However, there is a concern that we have. There's a lot of sensitive information is now moving around. United States of America. And even on FinCEN's website, they're saying, beware of scams. I, all of a sudden, I'm getting tons of addresses, driver's licenses, social security numbers, EIN numbers, you know, home addresses that are coming through to the law firm and the law firm is now transmitting to FinCEN. And so we have to make sure that everything is encrypted, that we have proper and safe portals for that information, because all of a sudden you have all this millions and millions of information floating around that a nefarious actor would love to get their hands upon. Cost and burden. So this 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 burden uh, of the CTA, uh, one of the one of the, the reasons for it to be that people are trying to get it declared unconstitutional is that it's going to take time. 
it's going to take some some people hours and hours of time to figure out who the BOIs are, who the controlling people are, you know, how their estate plan interacts, you know, whether they're exempt, not exempt. And it's going to be a cost. Most people will not do it on their own. So, for example, we've had to bump up the price of our um, LLCs, limited partnerships and corporations. We're doing keeping it very modest at three hundred and ninety five dollars extra for the work that we have to do to bring a new entity through CTA. And we have a service that files uh, all the stuff on the FinCEN website for a client for 250 bucks. I think it's the best 250 bucks they ever spend in their life, or they can be sit there for hours and try to figure it out and put it on. Because it has to be filed electronically. There are no alternatives. For pre-existing entities that we have until December 31st, 24. And by the way, there is some legislation moving through Congress to extend that date from December 31st, 24 to December 31st, 25, you give us an extra year, because I don't know on earth how we're going to bring 33 million companies through to the FinCEN registry for CTA by December 31st, 2024. And as you could see, it's not the company. It's all of the reporting around the company. It could be 200 million transactions uh, by 24th. But we have, we, have the, we have to bring that through. And to do that analysis, our firm, whether people use our firm or a firm similar to us, we charge $595 per entity to analyze that and 250 to file it. Uh, people could do it on their own. They can hire it. But remember, a law firm is more suited to do this for them and to make sure that we have the appropriate and proper reporting individuals. Because they, they, they won't even know in their trust who the reporting people are and what powers that they hold. And since it is a criminal, fine, it's criminal. You know, you go to jail, I think you'd want to have attorney-client privilege in putting that together in, in these discussions to get everything filed in. Now, the good part of this is, is um, it gives everybody, you know, an opportunity to revisit their documents, to revisit their shareholders' agreements, their LLC operating agreements, their limited partnership agreements, make sure up to date, make sure they're fresh. And then we have to add to all the pre-existing documents, we should add a section on CTA. Corporate Transparency Act, what has to be done that all of the owners and, you know, and, and controllers agree to comply so we don't bring our company into non-compliance and perhaps bring fines to our company. So we get the opportunity to do that. And I think we, we look at, at, at the things that we see um, every day. These documents are woefully out of date. They were great when it was originally formed 10 years ago, but there's been so many transactions in ownership. People have died. You know, people have made gifts. You know, uh, things have moved through trust. That this, th Those capitalization tables in the back are no longer even close to accurate. So it gives us a great opportunity to to take a look at that. And and, and last but not least, you know, it, it, there is, um, and we'll take some questions, there, there is um, in the in the court case that that happened in Alabama. The judge was in an opening statement said the following thing: "says You know, there are a lot of really stupid laws, and a lot of things that make no sense whatsoever, but they're constitutional. And then there's an act like the Corporate Transparency Act, which its purpose is noble to keep us safer." to allow the government to intervene for terrorist financing and money laundering and to help prevent crime, or, you know, that is noble, but could be unconstitutional because whether or not Congress had the authority to do so. There was one case that was filed just last week was Boyle versus uh, Yellen in the, in, the, in the federal district court in Maine. And there the challenge is, is that the ability to form and deal with entities is exclusively the right of the states. And the federal government should not be meddling with entities. It's not within their authority. Mm -hmm. So we have some of these uh, uh, peripheral challenges, but in my best opinion, uh, it's here to stay. The worst part uh, that I'd like to talk about uh, just in closing is its chilling effect. So it's so important, as you and I, you know, we spent so much time together talking about making sure that all of our constituents are properly protected. They've worked so hard 
to have their real estate, to build their practices, to build their businesses, to make sure they're protected from the claims of creditors, the use of entities, LLCs, trusts, asset protection trusts to protect them. And then to make sure for estate planning purposes that they're paying minimum estate taxes, they're able to pass things to the next generation effectively and properly. If they fail to create the appropriate entities they need because of their fear of the government and filing under the Corporate Transparency Act, it creates a problem with worry about a chilling effect on doing the appropriate and proper things. So there it is. It's, uh, you know, you may not like the message, but don't kill the messenger. Um, but that that is the Corporate Transparency Act. So, Paul, are there any questions that you have in Gino questions? So will you, what do you do if they, 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 they can't get along anymore? They have to get along enough to file this or no longer be partners uh, to get it done. There are no exceptions to the rule. The only couple of things that I would add to this is if you have questions or comments down below, just leave them. Leave them for Harry. We'd love to say, we'd love to get your input because I could go on about this, about this trying to destroy small businesses because this is what it seems like to me where their larger businesses have the competitive advantage and I've got over 30 entities. So I'm starting to scratch my head and going, oh my gosh. And, I'm, and I buy, you know, three or four deals a year, three or four entities going forward. It becomes a nightmare and I'm going to have a professional do it. I'm not going to spend my hours and hours to do it and not even do it that. I want to be able to do it correctly. This needs to get done correctly, number one. And Harry, what you said about going back and reviewing, we've talked at length, you know, your your group and us about estate planning. Almost 70% of this country does not have an estate plan. Well, now you may have the opportunity to go back and review your operating agreements, review all your entities and start something fresh and say, hey, this is what I have. Let me get it because now you're forced to do it. Do you want to go to jail and pay $591 a day or do you want now? It's almost like the pain now is, is too great not to do it. So this may be an opportunity that's born out of this massive problem. So um, there's a there's a lot to digest here, but I think, hey, you have a few months, but don't wait. Time is of the essence. And if you don't get it done now, you're going to be calling Harry up in December going, I need to get done. And Harry's going to say, I'm sorry, Gino, I don't have the time for you because I've got too many other people. So don't wait to get going on this. Thank Paul. you, Gino. Paul. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's a good, good reminder. And I, I was just thinking as you were talking that, so if if someone has an entity they've already set up or they set up a new one, let's say they're, like you said, getting a divorce, they get re remarried, there's a new trust, new kids and so forth. All that's got to be updated. Is that right? That is correct. Well, all that has to be updated. But at least, at least, you know, if everybody goes, uh, so, so the ex-spouse, for example, that does not want to uh, disclose where they live, uh, they could get a fence-in number and then disclose it to FinCEN and then just use their name and number, which is a little bit more more helpful. But when that spouse um, puts that interest in a trust, all right, then it's, it's, the trust owns over 25%, which happens many, many times, then that trust becomes a reporting entity and everything needs to be disclosed and there are no exceptions. So uh, it's it's going to be challenging because you have the crossroads between governmental desire to learn who the people are, all right, which is noble, uh, because uh, and and the the crossroads of the emotionality and all the other things that come to play. So it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be very very difficult. New entities, you know, a little easier. But the pre-existing entities one 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, there are no statute of limitations. Nothing. Every entity, if it's not exempt, it must file. And that's why it's important, I think, to get representation because – you may not know these little nuances, these little tricks that Harry can tell you by saying, hey, you may not need to disclose all the information. You may be able to get a FinCEN number and present that to the other Correct. side. So that's why it's important to, you, if it's plain and simple, you can do it. But if you have some type of nuances, it's always important to go out there and to get a second opinion. Yeah, and I, I think about the cases of property transferring to the next generation. Uh, you know, we obviously speak at a bunch of these apartment associations and 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 different groups and a big topic is getting real estate to the next generation avoiding tax and my, what goes through my head is 
you might in situations I've been involved with is parents pass away, kids, multiple kids inherit property. So now there could be three, four, five, in Gino's case, six new owners of properties. And how are they even, they, they've never dealt with property before. So they may have no idea about the CTA. How are they even going to know about the CTA? Who's going to inform them? Is that the purview now of the well, he, he, helping them? And then they all have to file. And what if they have four different living trusts with kids? Right. Am I looking at that the right way? This is. Yeah. Well, here's how that happens. So God forbid, you know, passed away and his wife and now he's got a, a, a property a large property that say went to six kids so it should go to the kids via and if there wasn't in an LLC it's an LLC so not, no child probably will owe over 25 percent at that point so none of them are reporting as reporting owners because it's 25 percent or greater however if they are collectively the managers of that LLC, you know, the six kids are the managers of the LLC, then all six become reporting as the controlling people of that entity. How do they know? Well, usually there is a administration that takes place when the parents have passed, when we're moving the assets from one generation to the next. And it's a requirement, I believe, on the part of the professional counselors to say, now we must register now, just like we transferred the property by deed, we now have to register the new owners uh, of the entity, not the real estate, the entity. It only mm -hmm. applies to entities right now. Now, as you know, Paul, there is a um, another act moving through Congress trying to get owners of real estate, not just entities, but owners of real estate reporting the same way as under the Corporate Transparency Act it is the Real Estate Transparency Act. So um, let's hope that one does not pass. But it's 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 in process. Oh my God, I know, but you know, it's true. What a nightmare! Are they trying to create nightmares. We've already got enough nightmares to deal with. That would be the ultimate nightmare. And I don't. Hey, I listen, Harry. I love you as an attorney. I have to say, really, you're one of my favorite attorneys. But it seems as if these attorneys are trying to create these situations to uh, get a little bit. You know, aren't you guys have enough work as it is? Do you need to do more work? I mean, it appears that there's, there's a lot. We, we, of we would be very happy not to do any of this. It's actually a pain for us as well. I agree. Uh, I, I, that's the... We can't we can't charge enough money given the responsibility. And the time that's involved, that's why we're giving everybody a break. Five ninety five an entity to ferret out an old entity for mm -hmm. five hundred ninety five bucks that could be through twenty different uh, owners in, in, in analysis and two fifty to file it. It's cheap. Mm -hmm. All right. So whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, good information. So Thank we you. Appreciate it, Gino. It's great to see you. Uh, we're available at any and all times. Um, and uh, now, hopefully, the, everyone knows a little bit more about the Corporate Transparency Act. And we'll do our best to keep everybody up to date with modifications and changes to that act, because I do expect changes to take place. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll never miss another episode.